Hi, I'm Mitch and this is a free CAD tutorial on sketching using the polyline tool then adding constraints including dimensions. And you can see that I've already opened up my Sketcher workbench. I've chosen the XY plane. The two Sketcher toolbars that I'll be using are the Geometries toolbar and the constraints toolbar and I'm mostly interested in uh, simple geometries and I think a few of the simple geometries are self-explanatory and that includes circles rectangles and polygons you can see I can choose any polygon I want and if I can't find the one that I want I can pick regular polygon and then determine the number of sides myself and it'll create the polygon for me. But what if I want to create a less well-defined shape using primarily straight line segments? My first instinct was to go up here to this uh, line tool and just start sketching out here in free space. But you can see that if once I'm done drawing that line, if I want to start a new line where my old line ended, I have to hover over the end point of that uh, previous line until it turns yellow. That will create an automatic coincident restraint. I can left click to start my new line and then continue on. But now I have to do that again and I'll have to continue doing it. A better way is to choose the polyline tool and now if I start sketching from the previous line uh, you can see that once I've created a line it automatically starts the next line for me and that really accelerates how fast I can create my part now if I want to stop creating new lines I can just right click and you can see that it's maintained my polyline tool here so if I want to start again I just left click and and continue another way to end uh, this sketch here is to just go up to the uh, stop active operation button and press that and that both kills the line and uh, cancels my polyline tool. I do want one more line here so I'm just going to choose one line to create it, do the coincident restraint and come on over here. And then I'll right click to cancel the tool so I've got my cursor back. Notice that if I drew a line pretty close to horizontal, it automatically added this horizontal constraint and snapped it to a horizontal line. I intentionally drew this kind of poorly so that I could manually add these constraints. Uh, so the first constraint that I'd like to add is a coincident restraint to connect this endpoint to this endpoint. And so I'll come up here and choose this coincident restraint choose the two endpoints that I want to connect. I missed it the first time. There it is. They turn green once you select them. And now I have created a closed geometry. And that's the first requirement for a good sketch that will be used later for 3D solid modeling. The second requirement for a good 3D solid model sketch is that it be totally constrained. And you can see because these are all white lines that these are not totally constrained. And what that means is that I can change lengths, angles, and uh, locations as freely as I want because I haven't constrained anything. So that's what I'm going to start next. I'm just going to start adding constraints to these. We'll just go in order here. Uh, let's add a vertical constraint to this line. I hover over till it's yellow and then I left click and there it is. I'm going to add a bunch of horizontal constraints. So that one's horizontal. I'm going to choose my horizontal constraint. I'm going to make that horizontal, that horizontal, and that horizontal. And I want this side to be more or less a mirror image of this side. I'm going to make this vertical by choosing the parallel constraint and then choosing the one two sides that I want to be parallel. Since this was already required to be vertical, this was forced to snap to vertical. Um, I can also uh, do that with the perpendicular restraint. Uh, I think I want, like I said, these to be symmetrical. So I'm going to choose the equals restraint and force this to be equal to this. And I'm going to force this to be equal to this. Uh, I also want it symmetric about the axis, so I'm going to choose the symmetric constraint, and I'll make the symmetry based on this line. So I'm going to choose this point and this point to be symmetric about the origin. 
And now I can start, the, the rest of these tools are adding dimensions, which are just a, a type of constraint. Um, and so what I can do is I might actually move this over as well and make it look a little bit more like the uh, shape that I'm, the symmetric shape that I'm trying to create. And so uh, I'm going to put uh, dimensional constraints on these two horizontal lines. So I can choose the excuse me, these two uh, slanted lines. And so I can put a horizontal constraint on the horizontal distance between this line and this line. And let's make that uh, 5 millimeters. And then I'm going to make this one the exact same, 5 millimeters. And then I'm going to add a vertical constraint between those two points. And let's make that 15 millimeters. Whoopsie. 15 millimeters. Okay. And since this line and this line have to be identically the same length, uh, it, it changes both of them. I can also uh, make, I can also, I could make the length of this line using the horizontal distance between points, or I could just choose the length or distance of a line, choose the line segment length, and I'll make that maybe a 100 millimeter line. And I will maybe make this one a 50 millimeter line. And now you can see that these are starting to turn green, which means they're fully constrained. I want the whole thing to be green, and that will make, give me a fully constrained um, sketch. And that is that will be my endpoint. So let's see if I tell it to make this 50 millimeters. Now my sketch is green all the way around. I have a fully constrained sketch. That is my goal for this sketch. And now I could use this to either extrude or revolve or do some other 3D modeling function.